In this video I show you 11 things that almost everyone always does wrong. Especially number 3 and 9 surprised me a lot. I couldn't believe how many people always use things wrong. Simply because they have always done it that way. Let's start with trick number 1. Most things you probably just hang on a hanger like that and that's perfectly fine. But there are clothes that get ugly pressure marks when you hang them on a hanger. These are usually heavier garments such as jumpers. To avoid these pressure marks there is an ingenious trick you can use to hang the clothes over the hanger in such a way that these pressure marks do not occur. Fold the jumper over in the middle once. Now take the hanger and place it in the crook of your arm as you can see here so that the hanger is pointing downwards in the middle. Now take one side and fold it over and then take the other side and fold it over as well. Now just take the hanger up and hang your jumper in the wardrobe like this. This way the weight is much better distributed and you don't have ugly stripes. Trick number two is about towels. Because if you always wrap a towel around yourself after showering you've probably always done it like this. You put it over the back, fold it over to the front and now take this piece and put it in the front of the towel and maybe twist it down a few more times. The problem is, though, if you only move a few times the towel will keep slipping. You have to fasten it again and again. There is a much simpler method that holds the towels securely without ever slipping. Take it from the back again and put it around you. Now instead of tucking this little corner in at the top you should fold it over once as a whole. And to make it really secure repeat this whole process again and fold it over one more time. Because now you can do whatever you want. You can jump around, you can run around and you don't have to worry about your towel slipping down. And do you already know this ingenious method of how you should actually use a cheese grater? Surely you do it most of the time like this. You grab it and you put it on a plate or in a bowl. And you start grating whatever you want to grate. The problem however is that you usually have to hold the cheese grater firmly which means that some of the cheese will fall off. To avoid this there is a much more ingenious method. Simply lay the cheese grater down as you can see here. Grating is much easier this way and nothing will fall off because the entire content falls into the cheese grater. So you can simply tip it out over the bowl or dish and the whole content is really in the bowl and no longer lying next to it. There's also an ingenious bonus trick. If you don't want all the cheese to stick to the cheese grater, take some oil or butter and grease the cheese grater with it beforehand. Because that way nothing should stick here and everything just slides through. Do you have cleaning gloves like this? Then maybe you've been using them wrong all your life. Because there is an ingenious trick that can even be very useful. When you use such gloves you usually just slip them on and start cleaning. But there is the mistake. If your gloves look like this at the bottom you have definitely done it wrong. Actually you should fold the end over which is what it says on most of the packaging of these cleaning gloves. Just fold the end over briefly until the rubber surface ends. Because that's what cleaning gloves are supposed to look like. And there is as I said a really ingenious reason for this. Which I'm going to show you now. Because when you clean something your hands or rather the gloves naturally get wet and also come into contact with cleaning agents. If you don't wrap the end and hold your hands up then you have the problem that the whole thing gets on your skin which is not so good. But if you fold the end over then all the cleaner and the water here runs into this little flap of the glove and you don't get any more on your skin and you can just tip it out again afterwards. Do you also like to wrap presents in these gift bags then you've probably always used them incorrectly. The problem with these is that although you can carry them by the two handles the top of the bag is always a little bit open. This means that you can always see what's in the bag beforehand. So if you don't want to wrap the gifts in it separately you should take a closer look at this trick. Because there is a function that allows you to close them without having to tape them shut. And this function is even intended by the manufacturers but hardly anyone knows about it and therefore almost no one uses it. Because actually you should do it like this. Now you look inside the bag and you should always put these cords in the opposite hole from the inside like you can see here. That means this cord goes through this hole and on the other side we do the same with the other cord. And do this with all four pieces because now we have done this. You can now just pull the bag by the handles and it will close automatically. This way you can carry it around but no one can see into the bag. Not even when you hand it over. Firstly you have to open it directly. And that really shocked me. Most people even use their heating thermostate completely wrong and burn a lot of money. 
Because when you get cold, do you quickly turn the heating up to 5 so that it gets warm quickly? That is actually completely wrong. You have to understand how the heating thermostat works. Because the numbers don't mean that if you set it to a high setting, it will warm up faster. It just means that the heater will heat up longer because you have set it to a higher temperature. With the thermostat, you tell the heating how warm you want it in your home. Somewhere on your thermostat, you will probably even find the degree numbers that each number on the thermostat means. For example, for me, 2 is 16 degrees Celsius, 3 is 20 degrees Celsius, 4 is 24 degrees and 5 is 28 degrees Celsius. So the heating switches on automatically when the temperature is below the value you have set. As soon as the thermostat reaches the temperature you want it, it switches off again until the temperature drops further and it switches on again automatically. So if you set the heating to 5, it means you want 28 degrees Celsius, which you'll probably never get. So that means the heating just runs and runs all the time. The higher number you have set, however, does not let more water into the heating and it does not warm up faster. So if you want 24 degrees, set your heating to 3 and leave it at that number. You can even save a lot of money on energy costs because you now know how your heating works properly. And I couldn't believe it either, but you can use aluminium foil wrong. Because aluminium foil has two sides and they have two different properties. Depending on what you have to put in the aluminium foil, you have to use a different side because we have a shiny side and a matte side. The shiny side reflects heat more than the matte side. This means that if you want to put something cold in the aluminium foil, you should let the matte side face inwards. And when you put something warm in aluminium foil, the shiny side should be facing inwards because that way you can keep warm foot warm better. And there's even an ingenious way you can use a pasta strainer like this much better and easier. Because you probably always do it that way too. That you just put your pasta strainer in the sink, you boil your noodles, potatoes or rice and simply pour the whole thing in here so that the water runs off. And what do you do afterwards? Usually you tip the noodles back into the pot. But you can save yourself this process altogether because it's much easier. Take a pasta strainer and put it in the top of the pot where the pasta and the water are. And now you simply tip both together. This way the water runs out and the noodles stay directly in the pot and you don't have to tip them over afterwards. If you have bottles like this, there's even an ingenious trick that makes the drinks taste better for longer. Because most of the time you do it like this. You pour yourself some of the drink or drink directly from the bottle and then simply close it again. However, you should actually do it a little differently. Instead of closing the bottle so that there is still air in it, you should squeeze the air out first. This trick works with all carbonated drinks. Now squeeze the bottle until the liquid reaches the top of the cap and then close it. Because there is no more air in the bottle, you will have some of the carbonic acid for much longer. Otherwise, the carbon dioxide will combine with the air and escape more quickly. This way the drinks taste much better for longer even if it looks a bit strange to put the bottles like this. Do you like to eat Toblerone? Then you've probably been using them the wrong way too. Because normally you do it like this. You open the package and take out the little mountains. Now of course you don't want to just nibble on this bar but break off the individual pieces. Do you always do this by putting your finger between them and trying to break them off? Then you know the problem that it usually takes some time and it's not that easy. It works much better if you press the mountains directly together as you can see here. It's much easier and faster that way and your hands are less full of chocolate afterwards. An equally ingenious trick is built into every package of Toffee Fay. You probably know that you can't easily get the individual pieces out of the package. Maybe you lift them up from the side and push them out. Some are really loose but some are still very tight in the package. Instead of doing it that way you should look at these holes. All you have to do is press down with your fingers. The Toffee Fay will come out and you can grab it and take it out. Would you also like to know 9 more things that everyone always does wrong? Then click on the video you see on the screen now because there I show you some more.